welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Now, welcome back to the beginning of my self-published science fiction contest vlog, at least for the first part of this. So right now, we are reading 10 to 20 percent of each of the books that we have been assigned and I, I've done all the math for all of these books so I know I'm aiming to get 20 percent read of each one so I get a good feel of them. I'm gonna just kind of take you on that journey. To begin with I do want to remind you that everybody's reading is different so if I decide to not continue with the book it's not because something's inherently wrong with it. It just means it's not one that works for me. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I have already read a few books, so I'm going to catch you up to what I have read so far. The first book I picked up was The Boy Who Walked Too Far by Dom Watson. I would can categorize this as weird. It, it's science fiction, but I, right now I'm getting more of a fantasy vibe from it, so I'm interested to see how the science fiction is going to play out more. This kind of started off a little bit grating on me. There was a lot of description, a lot of adjectives being used. I had no clue what was going on, but it was still a compelling read. It compelled me further to read it and to read it through the 20% to the point where there's now an investigation starting. Now I like investigations in my stories, so I said yes, I am still interested in reading this. But I can understand if other people get put off by all the description and adjectives and then just pure confusion of what is being introduced at this very beginning point. So for me, this has been a yes so far. I then picked up The Earth Concurrence by Julia Hooney. At this point, I was thinking that there was still going to be a space opera September, and so I went and looked at all the books that had the subgenre of space opera and started reading those first in case one caught my fancy and I would then wanted to read the whole thing in September, whether or not my group cho chooses to. So that was is my thinking on these next three. And so we have The Earth Concurrence by Julia Hooney, and this is a new adult science fiction, is what I would categorize this. It's following Serenity Cassis, who is the daughter of a famous explorer. She has been brought along on a space journey because she is his daughter. And so there's a little bit of friction at the beginning because she doesn't have a job, so then she doesn't have a purpose, and people are like, well, you're just kind of mooching. And she ends up getting a job in the science division, so she's not directly underneath her dad's supervision. She's under someone else's. This is exactly kind of what you think, is the society has gone back to Earth. And that's where, it, at 20%, it leaves you. They've now just started setting up their base, and they're getting ready to explore and see, are there any humans left? Or what is the status of the planet? Is it livable for humans again? And it was another yes for me because this checks all the boxes I like in my science fiction, space opera, and adventures. I like the new adult category of people trying to figure out who they are and how they fit in with everything else. Next, I picked up The Stars Within by Lena Allison Knight. This is also what I would consider a new adult science fiction book. And then this has people with powers who are used to the benefit of corporations. And in this instance, the main character whose name is blinking on me at this very moment, she is a very strong telepath, telekinetic. She's being used to quell a rebellion and benefit for the company, this planet bound some rich minerals and part of the original contract is if they did then this company got to take over everything and the people who've lived there for generations don't care they they this is their planet they want to have control of what they found what they're working and the main characters brought in to basically be corporate might and that's as far as i've gotten and i'm intrigued on this and this is a yes for me but i'm really kind of like come on let's go the synopsis on the book has given certain promises. We haven't even hit that point of where this is an issue. So there's a, there's a lot of build-up going on here, and I'm ready for the next part to happen. Again, it's a yes, because I'm curious to know what's going on, and when the big push-off incident to this woman's 
next part of her journey is gonna happen. And then the fourth book I'm gonna talk about right now is A Space Girl from Earth by Christina McMullen. And this follows Ellie, who has grown up on Earth, thinks she's from Earth, and then finds out in the first few chapters that no, she is an alien. And that is actually why, while it, she's humanoid, her skin has white dots on it. So this is also a new adult category because Ellie's in college and again trying to figure out what she wants to do. She has plans what she wants to study and it's not been working out for her and then this on top of that gonna be some interesting issues. And then this was the first book where I hit my 20% and I was like okay yes I want to know what's going to continue happening and then I kept reading so I read more than 20% at the time I was reading this. I have now put it back on hold so I can get through the rest of the books and mark them yes or no. Again, I like my space opera. That's where I've started. So I've started with a lot of nice highs. It's going to be interesting when I do find one where I'm like, no, I don't want to continue. So, so far I have four yeses. And now I'm just going to keep you up to date as I read. So I am back to talk about, I think, seven more books that I've read for the contest. And just going to jump in with them. I don't think this is in the order I read them. They're just on the order of the list that I have. And I skipped around a little bit, but then decided I should just kind of go down the list. The first one I'm going to talk about today is The Last Noah by David Cuff. This one for me is a no. Just from the writing style, it is all telling you what is going on. You're not really experiencing it with the characters. Like for example, there's a couple things where they'll There'll be a little bit of dialogue, and then it'll be like, oh, and Miranda said this, and it just tells you generally what was said, and doesn't actually let her say it in her own words. Yeah, it's, it's just the writing style for me is not working. I feel like I'm still confused on why Robin and Miranda have been taken. They haven't met anyone else, and there's nothing there. Nobody has met them or anything and that's still like the first 20 percent of the book not working for me and then there is effacement by Hieronymus Hawks is the author name and this was one where the description did not sound interesting to me but after reading the first 20 percent I am interested to know what's going on it has some interesting technology where everyone has like a life log that is recorded and it's now law that everyone has to have one the main character wakes up and finds his home destroyed and his life like his vita chip that's in his neck that connects him to his life log is missing and he has no clue what to do <laughs> and just kind of how things are unfolding so i am intrigued to find out what's going to happen and if he figures out what has happened and how he's going to react to that there's been a few flashback scenes and so this is a case where the reader knows a little bit more than the character and it's working for me i am enjoying this and this was a yes that i want to continue then some of my best friends are human by liz anderson i would say that this is a young adult science fiction from the title i wasn't sure if we were following an alien perspective or a human perspective it seems like it is a human perspective but they have grown up in a society where not everyone is human. It definitely feels like they could be alien until you get a few more clues. The only thing that isn't working for me on this one is a lot of the slang. There's just so much of it. And I get it. Language changes, sure. That I mean, that's going to be part of it. But I think it's gone too far on make, trying to make the teenager's languages unique with the slang that they use. However, I am still interested to know what's going to happen and how everything is going to work out, especially with that title of some of my best friends are human and the main character is is human from what I have gathered. This was a yes for me. I then tried Sandstone by Giacomo Kyle Hatanaka and this was one where I think the cover is very pretty. But I don't think that what I read in it matches the vibe that the cover is giving. We have had like two alternating timelines. With the first one, I was a little confused. There was a date and then it went into it and I 
did not understand that what I was reading was supposed to be a diary entry or a journal entry until we get to the next perspective and then they talk about having this book. I'm like, oh, okay. And it seems a little odd because there's a lot of and signs used instead of having the word and. And I think that was the author's way of trying to say this is somebody writing down their experience. But again, it wasn't clear that this was a journal entry. And I say that as someone who writes a journal. There is very much a different rhythm for when I'm writing my journal than when I'm writing a story. The first character that you're following is in the future, but it's after the world has fallen. And so they're trying to figure out the things from the past, which is our time. And then the char the second perspective, which you get in the next chapter, is even farther in the future where things have risen again. Techno technology has improved. And I did not like that character at all. I, I don't think they're meant to be likable, but the stream of conscious writing style for that character was just driving me nuts. So at this time, this is a no from me. I'm finding the first character perspective, the one that is finding out about how things have fallen from our society, from what I've gathered anyway, that seems interesting. But the stream of conscious writing narrative for the other character, I'm like, I, I don't care. Again, I, I believe that that character is meant to be unlikable. They're, that is the purpose, but I don't care to read from them. You even with an unlikable character, you have to give them, you have to give readers a reason to read their perspective, and I haven't gotten that in what I've read so far. The next one was "Behold Humanity, May We Come In" by Ralts Bloodthorn. This is one that I was really skeptical about. Just the cover and the description made me think more like a game lit, which I think it is, but the first chapter hooked me. It's from an alien perspective of coming to Earth and discovering ice cream, and then how they think they have figured out things about human society from that, and take it back, and then they try things out with their war against the humans. I was engaged even with, I mean, we didn't only stay with that perspective, but all the perspectives that I've seen so far and the bit that I've read have been non-human. And as they're looking at human society, I can be like, yeah, yeah, no, that, that would be very weird. Yes, okay, I could see how people would think that or somebody would think that. I am actually really interested in reading this one and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to try it since it's not something I think I would have picked up on my own otherwise. I then picked up Entropy by Dana Hayward, and this became a no for me with the over description of everything. And it starts off just describing and setting the place. But since the place is Arizona, that's a real world location, I don't need as much description as the author was giving. Especially when we come to phrases of description like cinnamon colored sand. When you're going to describe something, you're describing it because it's going to be different from most people's perspective. And the cinnamon colored sand, which I've seen different shades of color of sand, was just a little step too far. And that's just one example. There was several and it was very info dumping at the very beginning. Again, the author was really trying to set the place and that does not work for me. I'm the type of reader that I'd rather be thrown in and then figure out what's going on versus here, this is the setting, this is where we are, and now we go into things. So that's why it's not working for me, just because it's not approaching the storytelling mode in the method that I read. I'm sure that this is going to work for other people. I but this just isn't me. And last, I have Onslaught by Bowen Greenwood. And this was one that, from the description, I was interested in reading further. But starting off with the characters, this is a case where it did jump into things right away and you're left to kind of figure out what's going on. But the jumping in was very confusing. For example, meeting the first character whose name is Langston Wheeler, you don't realize that is his name until much later because the person he's talking to sometimes calls him Langston and sometimes calls him Wheeler or something. Forget the 
Wheeler, like whatever organization. So I thought that Wheeler, the organization, was a title, and Langston was his name. And then later, they're like, oh no, his name is Langston Wheeler. I'm like, that wasn't very good setup for the character. But I was willing to overlook that. Like, okay, all right, let's continue. We have Langston meet the female love interest and as he's describing her and then all of a sudden he she looks exactly like someone that he's in love with but he wasn't allowed to be with and I'm just not in the mood for that right now in a different mood it would work for me but right now that's not the sort of story that I am wanting to read not from the promises that are being made at this time in the book is this a bad book or bad writing otherwise no the I mean honestly these are just little things that for me at this time make me go not interested to continue and that is what we are figuring out right now so again I want to reiterate none of these books are bad none of them are awful writing or anything like that that's not the purpose of this part of the contest the purpose of this part is just to be like is your reader brain saying yes I want to continue reading I was sad when I got my first no the first four that I read they were all yeses I was really excited and then I started getting some no's and I was like, oh, I, w I wanted all 28 books that we had on our list to be great and I loved and I wanted to continue reading. But again, we are all different readers. So I will be back when I have read some more. I am back <laughs> for more of my thoughts of what I've been reading for the self-published science fiction contest. I have, I have six books to kind of talk about at this point of time and my thoughts. So starting off with Chronicles of My Alien Invasion Life, this reminds me of like a young adult. I'm not sure if it's like so much going to be a space opera, but it's more, it's a young adult science fiction. And I was having a lot of fun with it. This follows a friend group who live in Oklahoma. They're close. They're like going into their senior year, it seems like. And it's the summer before they decide to go swim at this quarry and I really got the feel of the relationships between the friends and then all of a sudden they start talking about oh hey I think we've seen this portal well we should try to jump through it I got a little bit confused so I guess this one is probably more of a maybe it, it just depends on what mood I'm in whether I would continue reading or not I've marked it as a yes because I am curious to find out more at the 20% mark of what's going on. But at the same time, I feel like it's taking a really long time to get us into what is going on. And it's kind of interesting to see how the friend group might be splintering apart due to what happened with one of their friends disappearing in a portal to somewhere else. The next I read The Trellis by Jules Cantor. This was one where the description of the book had me really interested, but I didn't like the cover of it. I know the cover worked for some other people, but it wasn't working for me. And this is in a future where if you have a job, you're doing great. And if you don't have a job, then life is going to be very hard to get a job, even like an entry level position somewhere. And it seems like this story is going to focus on a building that is called the trellis set in Chicago. So this is a future world. Chicago. This building doesn't exist at this time. And I'm curious to know what is happening and how it's all going to come together at 20% of the book at least. And then I read Malfunction by J.E. Parasi. And this book was not what I was expecting when I read the description, but it starts off with a woman who looks at genes and like, DNA and an old friend comes calling and says he needs her help to save another friend. And then she agrees to go do it, even though they haven't seen each other for a very long time. And she actually knows that he's a fugitive. And by helping his friend, finds out that there is a bigger problem at stake because his friend has been genetically modified, heavily genetically modified. And it appears that with under the right circumstances, somebody can go in and pilot this other human. Also that this human has genomes that have gone extinct on Earth at this time. So this is like a very far future after an alien invasion kind of world. Yeah, 
I, I'm very much intrigued to see how this is going to play out. And I'm also curious if this is going to have a romance subplot, kind of from the friendship that the two already have, and maybe they liked each other before and never did anything. And then I read The Orthogonal Galaxy by Michael L. Lewis, and this one ended up being a no for me. Mostly because I am from Kansas, not Wichita, but I know that Wichita is a city one of the biggest cities in the state of Kansas. And so having a farm boy from Wichita doesn't make sense. It would be like saying, oh, I'm a farm boy from New York City. No. <laughs> no. At least from someone who knows what Wichita is like. And so that threw me out of the book. And then the dialogue with his mother, who is not speaking like someone from the Midwest, and it doesn't say maybe she's from the south but that that's the accent that she's given and then the commentary about his parents being farmers and uneducated is a trope that is highly overused and is actually offensive i did not grow up on a farm but i know many people who did and especially those who want to go back and continue farming all of them have gone on to get education related to agriculture and technology because that is the future and this is supposed to be set in a future from here and so just building off of that premise I couldn't get into the story because it seemed like it wanted to use some of the tropes that you find in older sci-fi from like Asimov and Heinlein which worked at that time because writing in the 50s and 40s yeah a lot of farming families didn't go to college my mom grew up on a farm and she was the first in her family to go to college. And because she went to college, her younger sisters also went to college. But my grandfather had an eighth grade education. My grandmother had a ninth grade education because she walked out of high school. At one point of time, that sort of commentary or setup would have made sense, but not in this day and age. So the whole premise of the farm boy from Wichita with parents who are at who are uneducated farmers in a future from now, I couldn't buy it, which meant I couldn't buy the rest of the setup for the story. And so for me, it's a no. I wouldn't mind trying this author out again because the writing flowed. It, it was easy to read. And typically this would be something that I would find topic-wise compelling, but for the setup. This story didn't work for me, but again, I would not mind trying something else by this author. And then I read Witch Six by Tyler Sen, and this has an interesting setup. So the world that has been colonized, it talks a little bit about that at the beginning. So then it's like you're getting into it before you get more of a magic with witches. And it seems that it's going to be like a mystery kind of setup. I don't know. <laughs> with the witchcraft, it, it seems like you have other personas that you can attach to yourself if you're a witch, and then you can use those other personas to complete tasks. Like he has one that is like a gunslinger, uh, another one that can bring people back from the dead. It's a very interesting concept, and with the mood I am in right now, it is a no. But that doesn't mean that in another mood I wouldn't pick it up again. So I have marked this as a maybe because this is one where I realized my down mood might have been playing out more in my interest, and I was like, I'm not sure if I would want to continue reading it or not, which, in mo in, which would normally means that it's a not right now book. It means I, in a different headspace, yes, I'm interested in reading it. So I've marked it down as a maybe, and if it gets selected by the rest of the team, I will more than willingly read it because it, ha it has an interesting world building and it's things that typically do work for me. Nothing that was actually trying to kick me out otherwise. So the last one I'm going to talk about today is Time and the Soldier by David Dvorkin. And the central premise, from what I understand, from what I've read, seems to be focused on time travel to correct a timeline. I don't like time travel books. That is a personal thing for me. It is nothing against the author or what they have written, but for me it's a no because I don't enjoy reading books that focus on time travel. Also, some of the characters kind of seemed over the top and overly dramatic and how they 
we're interacting with other people. Unfortunately, this one is a no for me. That has been the most recent six that I've read, and I will come back when I have read some more. And I am back to finish wrapping up my impressions from reading the 10 to 20 percent for the books that my group Book Invasion has been given for the self-published science fiction contest. And there's a lot of them, so buckle in. And these are not in the order that I read them. I'm just going down my list and giving you my impressions. So to start off with, I have Den of Thieves by S.A. Klopfenstein. I know I've just butchered that. I'm very sorry. And this is what they call a lit RPG science fiction. So it's kind of like a gaming science fiction. I really have no clue what to expect from this. The description was interesting to me when I first read it, and ultimately I gave this a yes. There are issues to it, as with every time you read, someone is reading, your mood really does affect whether or not you like something. And this was one of those that if I had been in a different mood, I could have had a different reaction. And the reason being is we are thrown immediately into a prison setting and the character has amnesia because something's been done to them. He's being told he murdered someone, he's getting images of a dead person, but he doesn't actually remember murdering them, which immediately as a reader I'm going, well that's suspect. How do we know he is? he's actually the one who murdered this girl? You, ha you haven't convinced me. And then this is supposed to be in the near future where prisoners are playtesting video games, role-playing video games. It's set up so during their sleep time they are actually playing in the video game and then in their awake time they are then doing heavy manual labor. And the plausibility of all of this again is suspect. So for me to be able to enjoy what I had been reading I had to basically go this is an alternate reality. Science fiction has to have some basis of science and you can have the plausible science of this could actually happen in your world or you have hey it's science but not plausible for this world so it must be another world and even though it was talking about real places I'm like yep can't be this world because the situation to get us there eh. but really what caught my attention with this beginning read was the character going into the game world and the experiences going through the character creation with the snarky AI, that was a lot of fun. And so I am curious to really just to know what else is going to happen in the game. And then I know there's going to be the reveal that the reason why he's in prison is not what we actually think, the corrupt system or something. So I, I vote yes that I would continue reading this. Next, I sample Deficiency by S.C. Esten. This is another one where we got dropped into everything that is happening really fast. The tech of the science fiction I was finding interesting, but the story plot of the character's wife wants to have a natural birth and he can't get a hold of his sister. She's just all of a sudden disappeared. I wasn't getting invested in the plot. Again, I was curious about the tech and how the tech was working. After sampling this, I'm left with the question of why do people want to live in a digital world versus the real world? It came to, once I read the 20%, that I didn't care enough to keep reading. So for me, this is a no vote. Even now, a lot of the details are kind of hazy. I then sampled Undercover Alien, The Hat, The Agency, and The Quantum War by Nathan Gregory. And this was a book that you can call experimental in nature because of the way it is written. We are following a neurodiverse character, main character, as they are going through life. From cues that we are given, I think the character is autistic. They really only use their code name, so at the same time there's some distance between you and the character. And I thought it was an interesting interplay. You're getting to be in this character's mind, and they see themselves kind of as a superhero. And so it talks a lot about their cape rippling or their cape like shriveling depending on what's happening, which I thought was interesting allusions to compare it to the work that they're doing. I think the formatting for this book is definitely part of the reading experience. At least the formatting I had, there was a space in between all of the paragraphs. Everything just feels kind of very, there's a chop, like a choppy rhythm to it, but it works. 
it really works for the character and what is going on. It caught my attention and I want to know what is going to happen next. As I am not autistic, I don't know about the representation, but that could be a trigger warning for somebody who is autistic or works with autistic groups. It, they might not like the representation here. For me, I can't say whether it's good or not. I just am finding it interesting. It's very clearly showing we have a character who does not think like everybody else. And that's okay for me. I voted yes. Next, I have Tasmanian Gothic by Michaela Kopieski. I think I've also butchered that. I'm sorry. And this was an interesting one for me. This is a case where the description did not interest me in reading the book. And the cover we had definitely says that this is going to be weird. And then I started reading the book and following the main character who is working on producing a drug, an illegal drug illegal substance but the descriptions of everything that is happening and then later we go on and we find out that there are mutants in society and the scientific reason for it whether or not the scientific reason is plausible I don't know enough about ozone layer stuff I kept finding myself very intrigued about it and then also just watching how people are living their lives in a city that is having fighting going on it made me think of Ukraine and Syria, Libya, and other places in the world where, yeah, you, you there's fighting going on and people are still living their day-to-day -day lives because what else are you going to do? This is your home. You just kind of know when the fighting's going to be near you and either try not to go out or to make sure you're away at the time that it's happening and to not get caught into it. I don't know anything about Tasmania or the city of Hobart. I know this is not a realistic portrayal of those places, but it does make me interested to go visit. Kind of to see like how much of the character of the city was brought into into the descriptions that I think I would find interesting. I am very interested in continuing to read this one. I think this is the one that I'm most interested in out of all the books that I have read so far. So next is Echogenesis by Gary Gibson, and this is one where from the description, I was like, oh, this sounds right up my alley. And then I started reading it, and no. <laughs> Again, we're starting off with people who don't have memories of how they got to a place. Amnesia is not a setup that I like at all. They figure out pretty quickly that everybody has been aged to have younger bodies. Maybe we're dealing with clones, but clones that have memories of the first half of people's lives, okay. I'm still following at this point, and then they have a ship that they're not able to get into the inner recesses of, but they're pretty sure that the capsules they arrived in came from the ship. We got questions, we're on an alien planet, the people are very much like, oh no, this is definitely an alien planet, even while others are denying, like, oh, we're just somewhere else on Earth, and alright. And then we get to the, oh, because they all have young bodies, they're all hormonal, want to have a lot of sex, and it broke me out of the book. So there's that. <laughs> I immediately was like, are we pulling an old war from like Scalzi where everyone got young bodies and then they all just had lots of sex because they're young because hormones, because that's what people do is they just have sex all the time. Was that how your youth was? Just sex all the time. No school, no work, no doing anything else, just sex. Can you see why I'm pulled out of this? And then immediately also we have the whole conflict between the main character and this other guy. This setup of everything just isn't working for me. So for this one I voted no. And next I have Melody by David Hoffer. This was one that the description really didn't interest me. And this is actually the, the last one that I was reading my sample and so I already knew that this was going to be picked for my group so I wasn't reading it so much to judge whether or not I wanted to continue. I was just kind of reading it to get a feel of it. So hey there's a spoiler for you. And I find it interesting we have a doctor of psychiatry who is helping people who ha have schizophrenia and he also has schizophrenia but at the same time, he hears music and he's starting to see that his daughter is also hearing that same music and so he's afraid that she has schizophrenia. Of course, 
everything is getting set up for it's an alien contact because this is science fiction. And also his brother is an astrobiologist and they have the scene with the little girl looking at a cluster of stars. It's very cute. The five-year-old is very cute. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Like I said, I already know that this is one that my group is going to read, so yeah. Next I have Yahweh's Children. This was one that the description I didn't find interesting, but as I'm reading the book, I think that this is a different kind of contact story is the best way I can describe it. The the style of writing I would call more literary, like sci-fi. The rhythm of the writing, the way we are talking with people, or spending time, it, it jo we keep jumping to different perspectives. And at the point of the 20%, I don't see where those perspectives are going to then come together, if they're going to come together. But the main point that I got from the beginning part that I read is we received a message from outer space and there's now all the speculation of what's going on. But yet, life for people on Earth isn't actually changing. That very much struck a chord with me because that is our society to a degree. It doesn't matter what is happening. You would think that something big would happen and would affect change, and then it doesn't. For me, this is like plausible science fiction. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I could see that happening. And I am interested in continuing to see how things unfold. Do, do we get further messages from outer space or not? And I guess I should obviously say I voted yes for this one. Next I read The Last of the Time Lords by Athena Stamalo. And this is one where I wasn't interested by the description. It sounds like it's a kind of like a Doctor Who story-esque kind of thing. And my memory of Doctor Who is as a child in the early 90s, my dad going, oh hey, let's watch this. And it was the Doctor Who from the 70s. And I'm at the age where I'm like, this is weird, dad, what are we doing? So I have never gotten into Doctor Who fandom. That being said, as I started reading this book, I don't need to be in the Doctor Who fandom to enjoy it. We have our characters, the bounty hunter Noemi, and the other aliens along the way, and I can feel that they are whole and complete people. And so yeah, I voted yes for this one because, again, I don't have to know the Doctor Who world. I mean, maybe if you do some, I'm sure there's the Easter eggs that would make more sense, but I can also, in, at the point that I've read, I can also enjoy this just as a story of science fiction, and that is good writing right there for me. So the next one I read was Grey and Nicobas by Gareth Lewis. This is an interesting setup. I, I can't say that this would be an earth-based sci-fi, or a plausible earth-based sci-fi. This might be more like an alternate earth in my head. This is where you can see the author playing a little bit with the amnesia trope at the very beginning, but then it gets pulled away pretty quick. We wake up with a convict who, in this world, when you are in prison, your body is put like on ice, and then your mind is sent somewhere like into a mindscape. And then when your time is done, you get put back together. And then the main character is waking up and he knows that his time is not done because he isn't quote-unquote rehabilitated and he's trying to figure out what's going on. And so we get, that's kind of where we're playing a little bit with the amnesia trope is we're not sure why we're waking up or what's happening there. And then we find out that he, before he went to prison, he was a detective. And in this society, everybody has like an AI implanted with them when they're born and this AI monitors you. So if you break the law, which is what this guy did, then you go to prison. And it doesn't matter if it's a small infraction or a big infraction, your AI is going to rat you out. And he has been called to investigate a murder. And what makes this murder interesting is no AI has outed the human that did the murder. Right there, I am interested to see what's happening. I originally voted at this as a maybe because of the mood I was in when I read it, but since reading about it, that portion has stayed with me and has built my curiosity. So yes, I do want to read this. I then read Echoes of Another Earth by J. Daniel Layfield, and 
in this from the 20% that I read, we are in the head of someone named Joshua who is in a different Joshua's body waiting for an asteroid to hit the earth and kill them. And I thought that was kind of an interesting like way for a story. Because normally when like an asteroid is coming, you have a character who's trying to escape the impact zone or stop the asteroid somehow. And in this one, the character is just waiting for it to come. And then you find out that he jumps bodies whenever a death occurs. So his death occurs and then he wakes up and finds himself in another Joshua. Okay, I'm interested. What's going on? Why is this happening? I'm also interested to know if he wakes up in another Joshua's body, what happened to that Joshua? Do they get pushed to another alternate as well? Or are they just dead because he took over the body? Definitely interested in continuing to read this one, especially as it's given us a second perspective of someone who I think might be seeing the phenomenon happen of him moving places and they're investigating. And last, but was not actually the last one I read, is The Farm by Matt Moss. As you've already heard, I am not a fan of amnesia stories where the main character does not know what's going on. And that's what kind of happens here. That's the setup opening. We get into it, we have somebody who doesn't know where they where they are or why they are they talk about this is the first day of my life but they know their name they know how old they are and they know where they are from and that's it and they're with some other prisoners they are at a farm they're not allowed to talk while they work it, it's very oppressive and there's no good reason for that oppression given it was not working for me. For this one, I had to vote no. So that has been my wrap up of the 20 books that my team, Book Invasion, was given to sample. Because we consider ourselves slow, slow readers, we have selected six books to read in total, or completely, and that is going to be in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed getting to hear a reader's perspective of sampling books and kind of decisions of whether or not they want to continue with the book. I think it's something we all do when we're reading, but I tried to explain how my brain was thinking about things and why certain choices were made of why we continue or not continue. Every reader is going to be different. Please keep writing. Thank you and have a great day.